to my channel. Here I am back with capacitors part 2. So in this part 2 we will be discussing about the combination of capacitances and the energy stored in a capacitor. Capacitors can be combined in series as well as in parallel. So first of all we will discuss about the series combination of the capacitors. Capacitors in series. Then the negative plate of first capacitor is connected to the positive plate of second capacitor. Again the negative plate of second capacitor is connected to the positive plate of third capacitors. Then the capacitors are said to be in series combination. In this figure C1, C2, C3, three capacitors are connected in series. It is clear from the figure that negative of C1 is connected to the positive of C2. Again, negative of C2 is connected to the positive of C3. Thus, you can say that C1, C2 and C3 are connected in series. And they are connected by means of an external potential V. Here is the potential V. Since these capacitors are connected in series, the charges on each capacitors will be same. But the potential differences across the capacitors will be different. Suppose the potential difference between C1 is V1, C2 is V2 and C3 is V3. You know the equation of capacitance. Capacitance is nothing but C is equal to Q divided by V or instead of V I can write it as Q by C. From this equation V equal to Q by C I can write the equation for individual potentials. So V1 is equal to Q by C1. V2 is equal to Q divided by C2. And V3 is equal to Q divided by C3. Where the charge is common because all the three capacitors are connected in series. Now according to the principle of superposition the total potential V should be equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3. Here in this equation instead of V1 you can substitute Q by C1. Instead of V2 you can substitute Q divided by C2. And instead of V3 you can substitute Q divided by C3. Thus this equation becomes V is equal to Q by C1 plus Q by C2 plus Q by C3. C3. Where Q is common. Q can be taken outside. Thus the equation becomes V is equal to Q into 1 by C1 plus 1 by C2 plus 1 by C3. V is equal to Q into 1 by C1 plus 1 by C2 plus 1 by C3. Again Q can be taken to the left side. V by Q is equal to 1 by C1 plus 1 by C2 plus 1 by C3. Now, what is V by Q? C is equal to Q by V. So, what is V by Q? V by Q is reciprocal of C. C equal to Q by V. So, V by Q can be written as 1 by C. So, V by Q can be considered as reciprocal of effective capacitance. Since the capacitors are connected in series, the effective capacitors in series is represented as Cs. So 1 by Cs is equal to 1 by C1 plus 1 by C2 plus 1 by C3. This is the effective capacitance of three capacitors when they are connected in series. If there are n number of capacitors, 1 by C will be equal to 1 by C1 plus 1 by C2 plus 1 by C3 plus etc. up to 1 by Cn. This is how you derive the equivalent capacitance of a series combination of capacitors. The series combination of capacitors. The reciprocal of equivalent capacitance is equal to the sum of the reciprocals of individual capacitances. The equivalent capacitance is smaller than the smallest individual capacitance. The charge on each capacitor is same. The potential difference across any capacitor is inversely proportional to its capacitance. Capacitors in parallel. 
if all the positive plates are connected to a common point and the negative plates are connected to another common point then that combination is said to be a parallel combination so this is a figure for a parallel combination of capacitors where i took three capacitors c1 c2 and c3 here all the positive plates are connected to a common point similarly all the negative plates are connected to another common point since the capacitors are connected in parallel they will be having same potential difference but the charges will be different let q1 be the charge on c1 q2 be the charge on c2 and q3 be the charge on c3 and a potential v is supplied in this circuit according to the equation c is equal to q by v i can write an equation for q q is equal to c into v so applying this equation we will find the integer charges that is q1 is equal to c1v q2 is equal to c2v and q3 is equal to c3v where the total charge q will be always the sum of q1 q2 and q3 so q is equal to q1 plus q2 plus q3 in this equation instead of q1 you can substitute c1v instead of q2 c2v and instead of q3 c2 c3v so here is the substitution q is equal to c1v plus c2v plus c3v where the potential v is common so v can be taken outside so q is equal to v into c1 plus c2 plus c3 where v can be taken to the left side so the equation becomes q by v is equal to c1 plus c2 plus c3 now what is q by v according to the equation q by v is nothing but capacitance so instead of q by v i can write it as cp where cp is the equivalent capacitance due to the parallel combination of the capacitors cp is equal to c1 plus c2 plus c3 so the equivalent capacitance of the parallel combination of a capacitors will be always the sum of integer capacitors cp is equal to c1 plus c2 plus c3 so if there are n number of capacitors c1 will be equal to c1 plus c2 plus c3 plus etc up to cn this is the parallel combination of the capacitor for parallel combination of capacitors the equivalent capacitance is equal to the sum of the integer capacitances the equivalent capacitance is larger than the largest integer capacitance the potential difference across each capacitor is same the charge on each capacitor is proportional to its capacitance capacitors are the devices to store energy while charging the capacitor there involves transferring of charges from one plate to another plate and this work done is stored in the form of its electrical potential energy and this energy is from the battery in expense of its chemical energy and it can be recovered allowing the discharging of the capacitors we will derive an expression for energy stored in a capacitor so in order to derive the expression here i am considering a capacitor with two plates the plate 1 and plate 2 suppose i am transferring the charge from plate 2 to plate 1 bit by bit it is clear from the picture that at any stage the plate 1 is at the higher potential comparing to the plate 2 so whenever you are transferring a charge from lower potential to higher potential definitely you have to do some work so here also when you transfer a charge from plate 2 to plate 1 since plate 2 is in lower potential we have to do some work at any instant let the charge on plate 1 be q dash and the charge on plate 2 be minus q dash and let the potential differences be v dash so i can write v dash is equal to q dash divided by c this is a potential difference at an instant
where q dash is a charge at any instant. Now, suppose I am transferring a small charge dq dash, small charge dq dash from plate 2 to plate 1. Definitely, I have to do some work. And that work dw is written as v into v dash into dq dash, where work done is potential into charge. From this equation, we can find the equation for work done by integrating both sides. That is work done w is equal to integral over dw, which is equal to integral over v dash dq dash. Here we can integrate within the limit 0 to q. Instead of v dash, here you can substitute q dash divided by c. So the equation becomes integral 0 to q q dash divided by c dq dash. Where 1 by c is a constant. You can take it outside. So w is equal to 1 by c integral over 0 to q q dash dq dash. Integrate q dash with respect to dq dash. Integral of q dash will be equal to q dash square divided by 2. So this equation becomes 1 by c q dash square divided by 2 within the limit 0 to q. Now this equation becomes work is equal to 1 by c into upper limit minus lower limit where the upper limit is q. So q square divided by 2 where the lower limit is 0. So the second terms, term becomes 0. So you got an equation for work done. And this work done is stored in the form of electrical potential energy. And that electrical potential energy is denoted by u. So u is equal to half q square divided by c. This is the expression for energy stored in a capacitance. This equation for energy, if you want, you can substitute Q as C into V. Q is equal to C into V. So instead of Q square, you can substitute C V the whole square. So the equation becomes U is equal to half C V square. Similarly, instead of C, we can substitute Q by V. So the equation becomes U is equal to half Q V. So we got three equations for energy. U is equal to half Q square by C u is equal to half cv square and u is equal to half qv. Now we will discuss the energy stored in the combination of capacitors. So first of all, we will find an expression for energy stored in a series combination of the capacitors. So in order to find the total energy stored in a series combination, I am considering the equation u is equal to q square divided by 2c. Where I can write this equation as q square by 2 into 1 by c. 1 by c is the effective capacitance of a series combination. So instead of 1 by c, I can write it as 1 by c1 plus 1 by c2 plus 1 by c3. So the equation becomes u is equal to q square by 2 into 1 by c1 plus 1 by c2 plus 1 by c3. Where I can multiply this q square by 2 into the bracket. So the equation becomes u is equal to q square by 2c1 plus q square by 2c2 plus q square by 2c3. Therefore u is equal to q square by 2c1 can be written as u1 q square by 2c2 can be written as u2 and q square by 2c3 is u3. So the equation becomes u is equal to u1 plus u2 plus u3. So the total energy of a series combination of a capacitance will be always equal to the sum of their integer energies. u is equal to u1 plus u2 plus u3. Energy is stored in a parallel combination. So in order to find the energy stored in a parallel combination, we will use the equation u is equal to half cv square. Here c is the effective capacitance in the combination, parallel combination. 
So in the case of a parallel combination, the effective capacitance C will be equal to C1 plus C2 plus C3. So in this equation, instead of C, I can write it as C1 plus C2 plus C3. So the equation becomes half C1 plus C2 plus C3 into V square. Now I am multiplying half V square into the bracket. So the equation becomes half C1 V square plus half C2 V square plus half C3 V square. Where half C1 V square can be considered as the energy stored in the first capacitor. Half C2 V square is the energy stored in the second capacitor. And half C3 V square is the energy stored in the third capacitor. So here the first equation I can write it as U1, U2 plus U3. Therefore, energy stored in the parallel combination will be always equal to the sum of integer energy stored in the integer capacitors. So, in the case of both series combination and the parallel combination, the total energies are additive. They will be the sum of integer energies. Where is the energy stored in a capacitor? When you charge a capacitor, an electric field is set up in the region between the plates of the capacitor. And work done in charging the capacitor has been used to create this electric field. So the electric field in the region between the plates of the capacitor implies that the energy is stored in this electric field. So the energy stored in a capacitor is in the electric field in between the region of the plates of the capacitor. So that's all for this session. Thank you for watching me and stay tuned for Capacitors Part 3.